Traditional Chinese opera was once a common sight in Singapore. The remaining troops in what was a vibrant community are struggling to survive. Meet the men and women battling the winds of change. Right now there are more Westerners who are more passionate and curious about Chinese opera rather than Chinese. <laughs> At 154 years old, Lao Sai Taoyuan is Singapore's oldest Teochew opera troupe. Only three Teochew troops are left, owing to a shrinking audience and a shortage of young blood. Ah, oh, thank you. That's relaxed. very nice. <laughs> Surprisingly, Lao Sai Taoyuan now boasts a performer from Australia and a new boss who's also a TV star. I took over this troupe in May this year because the previous troupe leader, he wanted to actually uh, stop this opera troupe from performing because business hasn't been very good. So I thought it's a pity because my grandfather used to be a drama backstage of this troupe and my grandma, she really loved this troupe. For street opera artists, we do not have the budget to actually engage makeup artists. I learned how to paint my face when I was 13 years old. Uh, who taught you? You just observe how the veterans do it, then we just try to uh, do it ourselves. Uh. When I was one or two years old, my grandma, she would carry me in the arms to watch Teochew Opera. And I always wanted to be that brave warrior on the stage. But my dad, he was totally against it. He wanted me to be a lawyer, to be a doctor, you know, like any other parents. He actually scolded my grandma and stopped her from bringing me to watch street opera. So the more he was against it, the more rebellious I became. In fact, when I was 13 years old, sec one, I actually ran away from home um, for one month during my school holiday. I was actually joining um, an opera troupe. And he was so furious that he took a cane and came in continuously for that night. Like Nick, Prudence Roberts also had an unforgettable brush with Chinese opera when she was 13 and studying in Singapore. I think I first saw the opera at Clark Key around 97, 98. My eyes just exploded. I just wanted to know what it was and just, be, just take it all in. And I think that night I was going, yeah, yeah, like just pretending to do it. Like, how do they do that? And like, what does it all mean? just has this quality that's so unlike anything I'd ever seen or known. So keep in mind I come from Australia where we don't have much in the way of culture. I loved the whole thing and I wanted to, I just wanted to be a part of that. The 33-year-old moved back to Australia in 1998 but returned two years ago. This time I came because of my boyfriend, now husband. He was living here and I wanted to give it a shot. I ended up performing with this troupe pretty much by chance. I was walking from Bukatima Plaza and they had their stage set up. I just thought, it's now or never. Like, I have to go and ask. There's no harm in asking. Prudence contacted the troupe on Facebook and by her second visit was performing on stage. It's more been teaching as we go. Like, I watch what the other maiden would do and then one of the older members would tell me just how to hold, you know, the right way to hold the little whip thing. 
Prudence works as a freelance writer and often travels out of Singapore. But she checks in with the troupe whenever she's back. At first, I was worried it would be negatively taken that I was foreign. And so I was nervous about that, nervous about am I walking in the right way or standing in the right way. And so I was nervous about that. I was happy when they said that there's not many audience, not many people out there watching. I was like, phew! And then I found myself being like, oh, there's like only the ghosts are watching today. Oh, you know, like, so it's definitely changed. Unlike Prudence, Mick is no stranger to showbiz. The 1999 Star Search Singapore winner has acted in TV shows, movies and even musicals. But still thinks there's nothing like performing in a Teochew opera. It takes about an hour for you to, to get prepared and uh, you need like at least one or two helpers to assist you with the costumes and I think that the script is very difficult to memorize and you can see on stage we don't really have many props so the opera artist we need to use our imagination like for example if there's a door we need to open the door whereas for TV I think ding dong mother I'm back you know for Chinese opera we need to project our voice <laughs> These days, um, one of the biggest challenges faced by all the opera troops in Singapore is that the actors on stage are getting older and older. And um, the audience watching the show are getting lesser and lesser. Sometimes no audience at all. In 2010, Nick left full-time TV acting. A year later, he set up Tok Tok Chang a company that promotes Chinese opera through performances, school workshops and company events. It's important to go to school uh, to conduct more Chinese opera workshops so that uh, the children, they would know this art. In fact, you know, when I go to school, sometimes they don't even know their dialect group. To reach out to more people, Nick incorporates magic tricks and other elements into his performances. If you were to perform like just an hour of Chinese opera on stage, I think most of the students, even the teachers or principal, they just fall asleep. So it's important to uh, make it more modernized. But of course, you still must keep some of the traditional elements. It's a very old art form. It would be a real shame that this has lasted so long would, would just disappear because people are more distracted with the short term things. That would be sad, yeah. Right now, there are more Westerners who are more passionate and curious about Chinese opera rather than Chinese. <laughs> um, yes, it's, it's, it's a little bit sad, but at the same time, if you think of it positively, I think it's, it's good because it's like culture exchange. Chinese opera is actually very, very tiring. There's so much work and preparation, and uh, there are many times that I, I also feel like giving up, seriously. But Chinese opera is not just about performance, it's about education. You can learn a lot of good moral values from Chinese opera. When I truly understand that this is something very meaningful, that I can enrich lives for the next generation, this, 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 this feeling keeps me going on.